Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we share a demo review of the Sonic Cake Matrix 2. First of all, we will hear the unit in action with the demo song, then we will describe the technical characteristics of the unit, latency included, also comparing it versus the Matrix version 1, then we will hear more sounds in a dedicated section of this video. And finally, I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell as it would really help me to make more videos like this. Let's start. Let's now describe the unit. First of all, this Matrix 2 uses the Sonic X new generation of AMP modeling algorithms, where the first generation was used for the Matrix 1 that I have reviewed in the channel. The new unit not only offers a new software platform, but also a new hardware one with a bigger screen, more foot switches, and a more complete set of I.O. ports that, together with the refined new digital modeling technology, offers a pretty good improvement over the first generation. Let's now describe the main characteristics of the unit, pointing out differences with the version 1 when needed. It offers 56 guitar amps, 5 bass amps and 2 amps dedicated to the acoustic guitar. Then we have 43 guitar cabinets, 8 bass cabinets, 8 IRs dedicated to the acoustic guitar and 2 dedicated to the fretless bass. Finally we have 15 user slots for our custom IRs that can be loaded at up to 1024 sample points. So here we have more amps and caps compared to the version 1 that has 40 guitar and bass simulations with 38 cabinets. We can load amps and effects in a signal chain composed by 11 blocks, amp, cab, effect loop and expression pedal included. Actually for the effect loop we have two blocks, one for the send and another for the return, but here I prefer to count just one block in order to have an homogeneous approach compared to other similar units of other brands. You can arrange the effect blocks in whatever position you want, but you cannot use many instances of the same effect many times. Nonetheless, we have two generic effect blocks where we can load the wah, distortions, compressions, etc. Therefore, for instance, we can have two distortion blocks in the signal chain. As regards the other effects, I would mention that the unit offers 19 choruses, 15 delays and 10 reverbs. So also in the effect area, this unit offers more than the previous one, with more choruses, delays and reverbs, and a total amount of around 
95 effects. You can use uh, this unit in stomp or preset mode with 198 presets at our disposal, 99 factory preset and 99 available for us, the users, that are located in three blocks of 66 presets each. Furthermore, it has a 90 second stereo looper compared to 44 seconds of the previous version and a drum machine with 100 patterns. Let's now talk about latency. The latency I have measured is around 5 milliseconds with an amp and a cab in the chain and it stays almost constant even if we add more effect blocks in the chain. So this is a little worse result compared to the version 1 which offered 4 milliseconds of latency. Furthermore, if we activate the effect loop with the return mix slider at 100%, we reach 9.8 milliseconds of latency. So basically we almost double the latency, which is quite unexpected. I mean, the loop takes around the same latency of the whole ADA conversion and signal chain processing, without the loop, which is, as I said, pretty unexpected. Maybe here we have space for improvements with future firmware upgrades. If you want more info about latency, you can check out the video in the card above. It can serve as a 6x4 channels USB-C audio interface at up to 24 bits and 44.1 kHz, and it supports the OTG function for directly connecting to iOS and Android mobile devices. We have uh, a Mac or PC editor to create our presets, which is uh, pretty simple and clear. In terms of I.O., we have a guitar input, stereo outs, a mono effect loop, an aux in, an headphone out and MIDI I.O. ports with mini jacks. Now, I have asked to Sonic Cake more info about the stereo outs and they told me that the stereo outs are actually balanced if you use TRS cables, which is pretty cool for a unit in this price range. The unit seems pretty sturdy thanks to its metal chassis, but obviously we need the proof of time to verify how robust it really is. It runs at 9 volts and 1000 milliamperes. The weight is 1.54 kilos and the dimensions are the ones shown in the picture. Finally, the price is around 230 euros or dollars, which is a 100 buck increase over its predecessor. Obviously, this unit offers much more, therefore, a price increase was to be expected. Let's now hear some more sounds. Final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions for my specific use case. And of course, you may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. Furthermore, Sonic Cake 
has sent me this unit for free, but they are not asking me to say anything, and uh, this video is not paid. Therefore, I'm free to tell you whatever I want. First of all, this is a big upgrade over the previous version. If you ask me, I think it is totally worth the extra 100 bucks. In fact, you have more amps, more effects, more IOs, an included effect loop, balanced out, etc. But the most important upgrade is the sound. I have to do more advanced tests, but to me it sounds better compared to the previous version, both in terms of fidelity versus the real amps and in terms of reactiveness to my touch. In terms of effects, I didn't notice such a big improvements over the previous version, uh, other than we have now more choices with more reverbs, more delays, etc. Reviewing the previous version, I noticed that, that the amp tones had the space for improvements, as typically the simulations were a kind of darker or mellower compared to their real counterpart. I mean, I needed to typically tweak the amp controls to get closer to the real amp sound I have in mind, especially enhancing presence and highs and reducing the bass frequency. With this unit, the amp simulations have been improved and I found myself less tweaking the unit, founding the amp models more in line with what I expect with the real amp counterpart. Furthermore, I really like the row of buttons to directly access an effect block. This is something that is available, for instance, in the Moore amp modeling pedal boards or in the new XMG30. It is a pretty handy approach, as with just one click we are right into an effect we may want to tweak, and the light associated with each button let us know at a glance whether the effect is activated or not. So, pretty handy. The computer app is nice, it has a kind of line 6 layout with the stripes to change the values of the parameters. So, all in all, we have a pretty small unit at a reasonable price, with amp tones in line with the price and with some interesting features, like the balanced out, the MIDI in and out ports, the effect loop, etc. I mean, the I.O. ports are pretty complete for this price range. This unit has just one problem, the competition. I mean, if I look at the 200 to 300 bucks units market, I found the new XMG400, the Zoom G2X or the Valeton 200JR or the Flamma FX150. It is really a crowded price range with a lot of good competitors. I need to do some more deep dive comparisons to verify which is better. But I think this unit is, uh, uh, how to say, pretty well rounded and balanced in terms of what it offers for the price. I mean, you have uh, good tones, a pretty complete array of I.O. with the effect loop, MIDI ports, balanced, TRS out, etc. The handy row of buttons to directly access the effect blocks, 6x4 USB channels where the other unit typically offer a 2x2 audio interface. So the whole package is pretty complete and well rounded at just 230 bucks. And uh, I think this is its major strength comparing this unit over its competition. In terms of cons, I would mention the 44.1 kHz audio interface, where I typically record at 48, and the latency with the effect loop activated. I mean, 10 milliseconds are still a good value, but if you add an effect in the loop with another ADA conversion, and if you add, for instance, a wireless system, well, the latency could impact how comfortable we play. As I always say, we have to take into consideration the whole latency of our whole system and not just the latency of one 
unit. But please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below and let me know which is the feature that stands out in this unit compared to its main competitors and if and why you would choose this unit over the other ones. We have now reached the end of this video, I hope you have enjoyed and if you did it please subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell and leave a thumb up as it would be of a great help. If you are interested in my IRs or in my Tonix profiles, you can check out the link in the card above or description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.